Hi guys, it's Mrs. Millison. Okay, today we're going to learn about static methods and static variables. Okay, um, the previous video we learned about methods that need objects of classes to run off of. Static methods do not. They do not need an object to run off of. They simply run off by their class name. Okay, um, I created a little blank lesson file here. The most um, the the most familiar um, static methods we're familiar with, or the most familiar st static methods that we've used, are from the math class. Okay, so if we want to use our math class methods, we could just type the class name, dot operator, and the method name. Okay, so this method takes the um, first parameter and takes it to the power of the second parameter. So this would give us 2 to the fifth. Okay, whatever 2 to the fifth is, 32. Okay, we'll print them in a second. Um, we also also have the square root method, okay, that takes the square root of whatever parameter we put in the parentheses, okay? So again, these are non, excuse me, these are static methods because they are not attached to an object. I didn't have to create an instance of a class, okay? All I have to do to run them is use the class name, the dot operator, and then the method name, okay? Let's print these and run them. Okay. So we should get this uh, 2 to the 5th power is 32, and the square root of 625 is 25. Um, and again, they both yielded doubles. That's why they have that zero at the end. Okay. So again, these are methods. These are static methods because they do not need to be attached to uh, an individual object, okay? Now, we've created static methods before. Um, when we did our uh, formula for quadratic formula, or we did a, a method for the quadratic formula. So I have that over here. Uh, we did a little scanner input where the user is going to enter A, B, and C from the standard form of a quadratic. And then we have our um, method down here. Now, we created a static method so that um, we didn't have to create any objects to run this solve quad method from, okay? So if I run this, uh, let's see, um, try to think of a quadratic. Okay, so this would be x squared plus 7x plus 10 would factor to x plus 2 and x plus 5, so my solutions are negative 2 and negative 5, okay? so. Since this is a static method, we have to put that word static between the access type and the return type, okay? And this simply means it doesn't need an object to run off of, and there's we have not created any objects. I just uh, ran the method and put the parameters in, okay? I could, now since I ran this method inside the class that it was built in, I didn't need to put the class name. Okay, if I come over to my lesson file and I want to run this solve quad method, I'm going to need to put the class name of algebra. Okay, so if I come over here and I want to run that solve quad method, okay, I need to put the class name before it. You spell algebra right. Okay, um, and then I'm going to need some parameters. So we'll do the same ones if that's okay. Oops. Okay, so now if I run this from a different class file, it should run just fine. I guess I should print it. <laughs> Again, the method yielded a string, so I had to print it. Okay, so again, it took the A, B, and C from my parameters, and it ran the, um, the static method inside this class file, a different class file, because I used the class name where the method was built. Okay, so as long as I have this file around, I can run this solve quad, ex solve quad static method in any file I want, in any main menu I want, or, or main method I want, but I have to make sure I use the class name before it. Okay, since I'm not going to attach it to any kind of object. Okay, now static methods can be private or public. Our solve quad static method was public, 
that allowed me to come over to this other class file and run it. If I had made it private, okay, I'm going to get an error when I try to run it in my other file because it's not accessible and it simply says it's not visible. Okay, so this is how I, this is, I'm finally seeing what's happening when I change my access from public to private. I can run it in this file, okay, because it exists inside this class file in the algebra class, but I cannot run it in any other file, okay. Of course, I'm going to turn it back to public. So I can run it in other files, okay. I have to keep that in mind depending on where, where we want to use our different methods, okay. Generally, we're going to make them public so we can use them on the, in other places. All right, let's create um, a, a new file, a new class called um, pets. I think I already created it. Save myself some typing time. Okay, so we've got a new class called pets. It's got two instance variables, type and name. So type is like dog, cat, fish, and then the name of the pet. We have a constructor, okay? Let's create some static methods, okay? So the first static method I'm gonna create in here isn't going to involve any variables, okay? It's simply gonna be a greeting. So public static, oops. Um, it's going to be void. I'm just going to do a print a print statement. I'm going to call it greeting. Oops. Oh my goodness. No parameters. And it's just simply going to print out uh, a little phrase. We'll do welcome to the world of pets. Okay, now I can run this method inside um, of the main method inside this class, okay? Um, or if I want to run this greeting in a different file, I just have to preface it with the class name. So pets.greeting. I'm going to do that. Let's go over to our lesson file and let's do that. I don't need a, I don't need to print anything. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I need a print statement. I don't. So pets reading and it should run because it was public it is public okay um, and again I I it's not um, attached to a object but it is attached to its class so when I'm not in the class I need to use the class name dot operator and then the method name okay so there's my welcome to the world of pet statement okay so that is what um, a nice plain old void static method without any reference to any variables. Okay. All right. Now let's do um, a static method accessing a static variable. Well, I don't have a static variable. So let's add a static variable. So in my pets class, um, every time I use my constructor, I'm going to create another pet. I'm going to create another cat, another dog, another fish. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to come up here and add um, a private um, static int for to keep track of the number of objects. Okay. And this is one use of a static variable inside of a class is to keep track um, of the number of objects you're creating, like a counter. Okay. So I'm going to call this num pets. And what I'm going to do is every time I run my constructor, I'm going to take that num pets and I'm going to increase it by one. Okay. So every time I create a pet, this value is going to go up to one. And I'm going to create another one. It's going to go up to two. I'm going to create another pet and it's going to go up to three. So this variable num pets doesn't belong to an individual object, uh, an individual instance of the pets class. It belongs to the pets class as a whole. So it's just going to keep track of the number of pets. Okay. It, it's not going to be attached to an individual pet that I create. Okay. Let me compile. Okay, so let's come over to our lesson file and let's create some pets. What do I need? Type and name. Okay, so we're going to create some pets. Cat. I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste, okay? Let's create a couple. Do a couple cats, a couple dogs. A couple cats, a couple dogs. All right. So now I'm going to create four pets. All right. 
So let's come over to our pets class and let's create um, a method to get the number of pets. Basically, we're going to create a static getter method to retrieve this variable. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is a this is a static method that is going to access a static variable. Okay, so static methods can access nothing, no variables. They can add, access a static variable. Okay, so now when I run this, um, when I run this get num pets method, um, I should get the number of pets. Okay, so I can come over here to my lesson file and I can do a couple things. I can just print out, again, if I want to access this method, I can run it off of the whole class because I'm not going to attach it to a single, um, it's not attached to a single object, okay? So I just do pets dot um, get num pets. And this should, it should yield me four because I have four pets. Okay, and indeed it did. Okay, um, so I, I have this static method accessing a static variable. Okay, so static methods can access st static variables. Static methods can access no variables if I don't want to. Okay, um, now a static method can't access instance variables because when I run a static method I'm going to run it off of the class not an individual object because numpets isn't attached to a single object it's attached to the class as a whole so I can't make a static method and use type and name but I can use a non-static method and use all of them okay so like my string to string method Where I, what I use to print my objects, I can include a, non, a static variable in here, okay? So I can say return pet is named, how about I'm going to say um, the cat is named and there are a total of pets. Okay, so in my non-static method, I can access static variables, okay? And of course, I can access the instant variables. Now I'm gonna run this, well, this is my string to string. I can run this off of individual object, which I'm, I have to, okay? I have to print an individual object, but it's gonna tell me that individual object's type and name, and it's gonna tell me the whole number of pets, okay? Let me compile, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so if I come over here, I don't need to do the two string, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So if I do pet four and then to string, it should print out uh, the dog's name is Cody and I have a total of four pets. Okay, the dog is named Cody and there's a total of four pets. So no matter which pet I run this method off of, it should always tell me I have four pets. Okay, so if we run it off of pet two, Fuzzy the cat or pet three, Hunter the dog, it's still going to tell me that I have four pets at the end of my statement. Okay, so it'll tell me the individual object's name and type, but then it'll always tell me that four pets, because again, this num pets belongs to the class as a whole, okay, not to an individual object. Name and type belongs to an individual object, okay. So we can see from our different types of methods, again, static method without any reference to anything, okay, as far as variables. 
static method that just references a static variable, and then a non-static method that can have both, okay, non-static and static variables, all right? So you just got to remember static um, variables belong to the whole class, not an individual object, okay? All right, let's elaborate on this just a little bit. I want to know more than just my number of pets, okay? I want to know, um, I want to be able to divvy this up into uh, the number of cats, the number of dogs, and the number of other pets. So I'm going to embellish my pet class a little bit here. I'm going to add a couple more. Oh, I'm trying to think what I want to. Nah, never mind. I was going to say, I made the number of pets instance very or static variable private. That's why I had to do a get num pets method. Okay. If I had made this public, I wouldn't necessarily have needed that, but it's always good to have those things private and then use my method here. Okay. All right. Let's do, um, let's modify this a little bit. We're not going to do just num pets. We're going to do number of cats. And then I'm going to do a couple other. Let's do num dogs. And then we'll do okay. so what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement inside my constructor instead of just adding adding to the number of pets every single time it's going to look at the type and if it's a cat it's going to add to the number of cats if it's dog it's going to add to the number of dogs if it's not cat or dog it's going to add to the other pets okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do an if statement for this part. Okay, so we're going to say if, let's see, oops, if t equals cat, what we want to do is we're going to increase the num cat. Okay. Else if, let's see, if t equals dog, we're going to increase the number of dogs. I don't know why my indent keeps doing that. Oh, driving me nuts. Okay, because again, one common use of a static variable inside of an object, and so, excuse me, inside of a class is to keep track of the number of objects. So we're just divvying it up. So of course, let's do an else, because if it's not a cat or a dog, we've got to add it to, um, I do this, I knew it was going to type over there. <laughs> oh. Hold on. And then we're going to do num other pets. And then I think, I think that's my constructor. Did I? Yep, there's the end of my constructor. Ah, oh, let's get rid of that space. Okay, let's see. Do I have to modify anything else? Of course, coming down here, I don't have a num pets anymore. Um, so let's do, let's take num cats plus num dogs plus num other pets, right? Num cats plus num dogs plus num other pets. And that should tell me how many total pets. I have my plural correct. Cats, dogs, pets making sure everything's plural. Okay, so that should run. Oh, forgot my parentheses, forgot that there. Oh. I'm gonna comment this out. I don't feel like changing all that right now, okay. I have to go back and change it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to comment this one out too. So now 
Um, let's add a couple more. Um, I got two cats and two dogs. Let's add a couple other pets and then we'll run our, um, actually we, we, we should modify our, um, we'll do another, we'll do another method to tell us how many. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so we got two cats, two dogs. Let's do a fish. We'll do another dog. I'd say we'll do four dogs, two cats, and a fish. All right, let's change some of these names. Uh, we'll make the name the cat Guppy. The dog will be Ubi. And another dog will be Rex. Okay. What's wrong with this? Oh, it's never used. I'm like, what's wrong with Rex? <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here to print out. Um, now, of course, when I print these, it should tell me seven. It should tell me seven total pets, okay? Let's come in here, though, and so that worked. Let's come in and print out or create another uh, method, another print method to, to um, tell me how many pets, okay? So it's sort of like this, but we're going to embellish a little bit. Uh, Yeah, we'll do a string and then we'll we'll just um all this pet counts. Okay, so we're gonna return. Now this is a static method, so I'm gonna use all three of these static variables, num cats, num dogs, and num pets. So I'm gonna say, let's see, dogs. Uh, num dogs comma cats um cats um other we'll do other pets Now, how I have this, since I'm in the class, I'm in the pets class, I'm going to reference the variables right away. Okay, I don't need to, to preface it with um, pets.numdogs, pets.numcats, or pets.numotherpets because I'm inside the class. Okay, so let's, now this is a public method, so I should be able to come over to my lesson file and print out um, pet counts. Okay, let me compile. Let me come over here. So I'm going to come down here and let's print out. Again, it's a static method, so it doesn't have to attach to. Um, it doesn't have to attach to an object. Matter of fact, it's not going to atop, attach to an object. If I was going to run it in this class, I can just run it as pet counts. But now that I'm in a different class file, I have to run it with the class name pets dot pet counts okay so i'm going to go over here i'm going to do pet pet counts and what will it will do is it'll count the number of pets that i created inside of this file inside of this class file so this should come back as seven it's pets i always forget the s right pets is my class name Okay, so now if I run this, it'll come back. Oh, not the total, the dogs, the cats, and the other pets. So there's my four dogs, two cats, and another, and another pet. Okay, a fish. All right, so if I come up here and add another one, let's just add one real quick. See that increase. What should we add? Let's add a hamster. So we'll add something to the other. Uh... name our hamster snowflake. So now it should change as my other pet should go up to two. Oh, it's just not being used. Okay. All right, there we go. My other pets went up to two. Okay. So again, since I created this static variable in this pets class, I'm able to use it and it is public. So I'm able to use it in other 
meth and other class files, but I have to preface it with the class file name. So it's got to be pets dot pet count. So I can go to other files, other class files, and create multiple pets and be able to count the number of dogs, cats, and other pets by using that static method that used the static counting variables inside my class file. Okay. So static variables are a little, um, you know, again, they're not attached to an individual object. They belong to the whole class. So things like a counter, keeping track of how many objects, that, that is just one popular use for it, okay? And I think we'll see some other things along the way, okay? But this was my little overview of um, static methods and static variables. And I hope it was helpful. Okay, see you next time.